Okay, so 5G as a whole, it has some major applications, some major aspects to it. If we categorize them in three major aspects, that will be EMBB, which is Enhanced Mobile Broadband. So this is the 5G application or aspect that deals with the capacity or throughput. For instance, in LTE, we, we used to get 100 Mbps, 200 Mbps, 300 Mbps, while in 5G, we go above 1 Gbps, 2 Gbps, and so on. So this one, the enhanced mobile broadband, this is the one which is giving us the high throughput from 5G. Another aspect would be URLLC. That is ultra-reliable, low-latency communication. So as name states itself, it needs to be very low latency. It is said that uh, we might even need latencies up to one millisecond only. Now, if you remember in LTE, usually the latency is let's say around 30 millisecond. And sometimes if the cells are loaded, it goes above 100 or 200 milliseconds or even more. So this is a very stringent requirement to meet one millisecond end-to-end -end latency in RTT round trip time. Also along with an ultra reliability to make sure that the connection is ultra reliable. So this can be used for let's say drones or uh, remote medical supports. So that's why it's very very important. Another thing which we might already be aware of is Internet of Things. In 5G we need massive IoT. So we might need millions of connections so it needs to have much more capacity than the legacy uh, LTE networks. So uh, having said the basic three um, aspects of 5G, let's look at how 5G gets this low latency, how we go for a very low latency in 5G. Th the secret to that is inside the 5G time domain structure. Why is that? In LTE, we have a fixed subcarrier spacing or a subcarrier bandwidth. That means in the frequency domain, the subcarrier bandwidth or subcarrier spacing is fixed to 15 kilohertz in LTE. Now, the time domain symbol length is actually inversely proportional to the subcarrier spacing. That means if we have 15 kilohertz of subcarrier spacing, so correspondingly our symbol length, a single symbol, will be around 71 microseconds. This means that if we need to put 14 symbols in one slot, as we require 14 symbols in one slot or one subframe, that will need 1 millisecond. So 14 into 71 is equal to 1 millisecond. However, in 5G, we have a flexibility that is called a numerology. So a flexible numerology means that we can have multiple values of subcarrier spacing in frequency domain. So let's say if we use 30 kilohertz, then it means our symbol length will be 35 microseconds. If you look here, 30 kilohertz is double of 15. So because the time is inversely proportional to frequency, the symbol duration is half of 71. So we have reduced the symbol duration by expanding our subcarrier spacing in frequency domain. What this effectively means is that for 14 symbols, now I only need 0 0.5 millisecond instead of 1 millisecond. Similarly, if we let's say go to a much higher value of 120 kilohertz or 240 kilohertz, the symbol duration can be much smaller and in the end, slot length will also be much smaller. So let's see how this gives us a lower latency. So let's say this is the 15 kilohertz structure that LTE has. So if this is my E node B, LTE node, and let's say this is the mobile device. So if I'm sending data downwards, the blue subframes, let's say they are the downlink subframes or downlink slots, and the green one is the uplink slot. So let's say the UE gets the data over here. Now in order to send an acknowledgement for this data, it needs to wait for the uplink slot, which will it, which it will get over here. 
So if if I just look at the radio interface RTT round trip time or latency that will be from here till here. But if I move towards the 30 kilohertz structure what will happen is that my slots will be half in length compared to the 15 kilohertz structure. So if I get my first data set over here then I can send an acknowledgement over here because I have an uplink subframe here now because I have shorter slots so the uplink subframe will also be coming quickly. In, in turn what it means is that RTT has now reduced from here till here instead of going from here till here. So by reducing uh, the symbol durations and the slot lengths we can reduce our RTT the physical layer latency. Similarly if we actually move to 120 kilohertz we know that these slots will go to 125 microseconds or 0.125 milliseconds. So RTT can also can be reduced much further. So it can it can even reduce four times compared to the 15 kilohertz. So that is how we reduce latency uh, in 5G by reducing the slot length and expanding the frequency. I hope I hope that is clear. Thank you so much.